So I've already created the index.html and I've created a folder which contains our styles.css. The styles.css is already linked to a page in here and we can just start by writing some HTML. Let's start by creating a wrapper and you don't actually have to have a wrapper but most, most websites do. So let's create a wrapper and then I can actually center this wrapper in the middle of the page and see how the responsive layout will work. And then inside the wrapper, I'm going to create an unordered list. And inside this unordered list, I will create a bunch of cards. So let's call the first list. Let's name the first list card one. And then I just want to duplicate this nine more times. And in Visual Studio Code, I can do this by holding Alt Shift and the down arrow. And this basically copies the line that we've selected. And let's now do this eight more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I'm just going to change the numbers. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's save this, go to a browser and have a look at what we have so here are cards and obviously this is not looking good but i will add a little bit of uh, styling to it now so let's go back to our index.html and we're actually done with this part so let's go to the styles.css now and add some basic styling the first thing i'm going to do is add a Google font called Roboto, uh, which you can find from Google Fonts and just include in your project for free. And let's start by adding some styles to a body. And the first thing I want to do is change the background color to something that will co contrast with white a little bit. So E2, E1, E0 will be good, will be kind of grayish color. And then I just want to make sure that the font family is set to Roboto. And now that we are done with this, let's see whether the styles are working. And as you can see, the background color is now gray. So let's go back and continue. The first thing I want to do is actually remove the padding from the unordered list. As you know, unordered lists have padding by default. So let's remove that so all the items can be centered later. Now we can focus on our wrapper. Let's start by writing class wrapper. For the wrapper, we I want to give it a maximum width and the max width I want to add will be 1366 pixels. And you can also do this with MC if you like. And the equivalent of 1366 will be somewhere around 85 M's, but you don't have to do that. It's, you can use pixels, it's not a problem. And to make sure that the wrapper is actually in the middle of the page, I want to quickly do that by resetting the margins. So margin left can be auto and margin right can be set to auto too. So now if I save, as you can see, the cards have moved. And if I was to inspect the page layout, you will see that that our wrapper is in the middle of the page. But obviously, we need to reset the list, bullet point, and so on. So let's continue now. Because we have max width of 1366 pixels, that means that the, the wrapper will be taking the maximum width of this number, but when you scale it down, will will be actually responsive. So if I was to scale this down, the wrapper will be shrinking with the browser, which is what exactly what we want. Uh, and we don't have to write media queries for this. Let's now, okay, we could now um, start with styling the unordered list, but just to make this a little bit better, to make it a little bit more specific, just because we have a URL and it doesn't have a class, let's add a class to it. And we can give this a class of something like responsive grid. I think this is unique enough. So let's copy this. And what I want to do is actually, I want to make this unordered list 
uh, to be displayed as grid. So we can style those cards on the page and let me show you. So let's start by writing the responsive grid class name in here. And the first thing we need to make sure we do is to display this as a grid. And then what we can do uh, with grid is grid allows us to create columns and rows and so on. And let me show you what we can do to make the to make these lists responsive. Uh, before we go any further, I actually want to give those cards a little bit of style because they're looking uh, they're not looking very good at the moment. So what I can do is let's give this uh, URL a class name of responsive grid just to be a bit more unique and I will copy this and use it in here and I can just do responsive with a lie and then for the list let's change the background color to white let's add a little bit of border radius something like two pixels would do we can just do it like a material design card and let's set the height to be roughly 240 pixels and I want to make sure that uh, the content inside is actually displayed in the middle just to make it look better so we can say display flex and we can justify the content in the center then we can align items in the center and also I want to make sure that the font uh, weight is set to bold and last but not least let's add some shadow on the cards and I've already prepared one which will be 0 0.3 pixels 6 pixels RGBA and for the RGBA will be 0 0 0 0 0.16 and then we'll have zero, three pixels, six pixels, RGBA, and zero, 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 zero point twenty three. And that should give us a very soft drop shadow on the list. Let's have a look. So they're all stacked underneath each other at the moment, and you can't we uh, can kind of tell the about the shadow you can kind of see the shadow but what i actually want is to create some sort of columns and some sort of columns for the so basically our list will be columns and when i shrink down the browser i want those cards to stack underneath each other and be responsive i will show you so let's go back and what we can do now is we can start styling the, the ul and for this we can just use the responsive grid class and make sure that the URL is displayed as grid and then what we have to do is make sure that the grid make sure that we add grid template columns and then here we can do repeat and we can set the repeat to be first of all all to fit Uh, sorry, auto fill, and then we can set uh, min max values. Actually, we can do auto fit and auto fill, so we can set min max, uh, and then we can, for example, give it the minimum of 230 pixels, which will be roughly around 15 RAM, I, I believe. Uh, if you wanted to do that and then the maximum width will be set to one fraction of the screen then if I save this actually let me add another property I just wanted to add a little bit of uh, breathing space between them and to do this with grid we can just add grid gap and we can set the grid gap to 2 RAM okay let's go back to the browser and as you can see all cards are looking pretty they have the gap uh, between them and they uh, they're all stuck in on one row and of course you can make them bigger you can make them smaller and they are kind of working off the wrapper 
deep dye did. So if I was to make this slightly bigger, you will see that they uh, they are stretching out. And if I make it smaller, you will see that they are stacking underneath each other because I've set the minimum width to be uh, to be 250, uh, 230 pixels. And let me also, let's refresh back. And let me also inspect this and do the responsive uh, toggle. So if I was to, let's say this is desktop and then we're going to laptop, you will see how the cards are now moving down and they're stacking nicely. And usually you'd have to do this with media queries, but grid allows you to kind of to do this trick which is kind of cool it makes your website a lot fluid um, you can make your website fluid with ease and as you can see everything is working super well let me close this quickly so this is kind of the important bit of this tutorial but one thing that i need to mention is that if i go to can i use and if we search for grid if i search for grid you will see that uh, the global usage of grid is now 92.19 percent supported which is really good but also you have to but also you have to be aware that grid doesn't work on well on some browser it's not fully supported as you can see here on edge uh, internet explorer 11 10 and so on and if I, uh, with Internet Explorer um, 11 and 10, you can actually add the MS prefix and you can do some tricks to fix things, but again, it's not fully supported. It's not, it's not great. So watch out for this. And I wanted to show you one more thing before I finish this tutorial. And if I was to open our website in, uh, this is Internet Explorer 11, I believe you will see that the cards are not working. It's, uh, the grid is not working, which is not good. And just to show you, this is Internet Explorer 11. And what we can do here is we can actually use the add supports CSS property to check whether uh, the browser supports grid and then do separate styles. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say if the browser supports grid what we can do is add support and then all we have to do is display grid and then so if it supports grid maybe we can use those styles for those styles for a page save this and if you go to the browser you'll see that everything is working as normal but if it doesn't support grid you will see that those styles no longer work because we've wrapped it in uh, the support display grid property. So now technically I can start writing properties outside this for browsers that do not support grid. So okay, I hope you found this useful. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel by clicking the, by clicking the red button below. I upload weekly tutorials just like this and if you have any questions please comment below uh, if you have any suggestions please let me know as well and I will see you next time thank you very much for watching as always my name is Raddy and you watching my channel Raddy the Brand